Hello, it's Classy here back to another Tribes video. And today we're going to be going over two teams for Shinobi Genealogy Tales. So this is the current event that releases with every banner recently around the second half of every banner. And it basically allows players to farm frags for any of their own units. There's like a long list, so you'll have to check that out for yourself. But overall, it's one of the best events and one of the best new additions that Bandai has made to the game because it helps us get our older characters up and ready to use using fragments for them. It is sort of like you are fragments in a way. Now, secret levels one to three are the ones that you start on day two because on day one, you just breeze through the regular levels one to five. So it's sort of like FG, the ways the levels are set up. And some players might just be able to beat secret levels one and two uh, with ease. You can just use a regular nuke team. You can use something similar to FG. So make sure to check out the guides for that if you're curious. But secret three is going to be a little bit different and we're going to find out why. And I hope that this video will be helpful because Secret 3 definitely is harder than the other levels and a lot of players have been asking for tips on how to beat this. So we'll start off with Slim's team. He has 650k power uh, with these units. And you can see that he has a tribe in force. He has 5k nukers in spirit. Then he has a tribe gauge booster in energy then Psy of course. So this is kind of similar to ATB in a way. And you can see on the opposing side for Secret 3, they have a good mix of everything. They have some nukers, some buffers, some tanks. They have Kakashi as well. And there's 12 turns. So this is unlike any mode we've seen really. It's kind of a mix. And that's why it's fun because it's new content. And the second team will be from Alone, and he has 550k power. So this shows that if you have good team building and you have some of the best units, of course, um, you'll be able to beat hard levels like these as well. And it is a little bit unfortunate that you might need specific units for this kind of content. But if you do farm Shinobi Genealogy Tales, you'll be able to build those units up. So it is a win-win. So the way that this team basically works is on turn one, of course, you just use the four cell to attack. Obviously KCM's Institutes will be really good for all the buffs. So that's basically it. We keep these guys together, of course, because they're a tribe that we're going to be repeatedly using and they're very tanky. Now in turn two, we have Obito and Nagato who have initial 5k vitality, so they'll have full jutsu right now. And then Kakashi has insta jutsu, so he has full jutsu as well. Now Nagato and Obito are both really good at debuffing and they do a lot of damage. Nagato also provides a lot of buffs, especially his fourth skill, which gives buffs every turn if you're faster, which you should be because as you see, the opposing units are really quite slow. Now we want to hit those priority targets. So out of these three, Kakashi is pretty dangerous because he just does a lot of damage. So as you can see, the enemy units are actually pretty tanky and they're quite hard to kill. We weren't able to kill that Kakashi even with all three of our heavy nukers attack him at once. Now we have Minato, and he is really good at taking on the tanks, which is why we're attacking the Sage Mucha Riot here. Obviously, he has a stun, just like Akashi does, so if he is able to pull that off and mess up our rotation, we're kind of screwed and we'll need a restart. KLM is the tribe gauge booster, the best one by far in the game right now and he has a lot of buffs and debuffs, so you put him first. Oh, and he does AoE. He can also stun too, so just does a lot. So now we'll have full trap gauge. 
and this is kind of reminiscent of uh, the HTTP strategies when you just have no tribe gauge in the beginning. But as you notice, Slim actually decided not to use his tribe there, and we're going to see why very soon. He did get the KCM22 off, the second one, so that activates a lot of extra buffs. So now Toby Rama has full jutsu and he's deciding to attack Toby Rama. Now you might notice that this changes the rotation in a way such that the spirit cell is pushed back and now the energy cell is right behind the force cell. Also, we weren't even able to kill Toby Rama with the tribe because their units are quite tanky, but we were able to stun him. KLM able to do the job. Minato is really great against tanks like Jiraiya, so he deletes him. So by changing the rotation and manipulating it in our favor, we're able to just have a better strategy overall and deal more damage. So now you can see our units are dealing more damage because of all the buffs we've been using. Unfortunately, we lost our Nagato, so there goes our uh, buffs for every turn but now we see that we have another tribe ready and Slim is going to decide to use it or not use it he is thinking ahead to future turns which is definitely underrated something that I don't see people doing a lot but he is going to use it here Yep, should be with just one shot him at this point with all the buffs. Now we see that Enogen's very weak. We also have a stunner for the other two, so they can't you know, do too much damage back to us. Okay, Enogen's done. Nice. So, really great. Now we basically won already because we'll have another tribe ready. Um, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. So this was a cool showcase of the tribe usage, of course, but also manipulating your rotations depending on you know who's in active rotation for the enemy or what future turns you might be planning out. It's kind of like playing a card game like Hearthstone. So there you go. That's 650k power to defeating this stage, which is still really impressive because ah. Uh, they're very tanky, and they do a lot of damage as well, as you've seen. Now we're going on to Lone's team, which is even less power, so let's see how he does it. Alright, so here's Lone's team. We have a tribe in force once again, but this time, the Naruto's used are a little bit different. I do believe that this is the AoE tribe uh, for Naruto characters, instead of the one that Slim used, which was Path to Hokage, so that's a single target stunning tribe. This one's an AoE tribe, so we'll see how that changes things. But in Spirit Cell, you see once again Kakashi and then 5k Nukers. Obviously, Lone doesn't have the best of the best ones like Slim did, so he's using what he can. And the fact that he has this AoE combo setup is still pretty good, it messes up the enemy rotation well, and it complements our other AoE damage. And then in energy, once again, you can put your buffers in there, your debuffers. So Toby is similar to Minato in a way that he can just delete tanks. So we have him and he stuns also. And then we have EMS and Psy. So EMS just lots of defense and lots of offensive buffs also. So great for tribe usage. And then Psy, you already know why he's there. Now you'll notice that have KLM in force now so if we use him for the tribe then he won't be able to increase tribe gauge so that changes things a little bit right turn one very simple you just attack uh, who did don't attack actually okay he attacked Kakashi yeah just like Slim did that's like one of the prime targets here stun and nuke is very annoying now we have this spirit cell fully set up, ready to jutsu. There we 
we go. Good debuffs. Sasri takes a really big hit already. Now, Lone is continuing his assault on Kakashi. More debuffs. And we don't have Tri-Bridge ready at this point, so that's kind of the difference here. Um, if KLM was an energy, we would be good for now, but we can still do a lot of damage here, just with the Jutsus. There we go, Kakashi's down. Okay, KLM takes a big hit also. This is a lot more risky than the last one. But now we do have the Tribe up, if he decides to use it, which he will. So this one will deal AoE. Also provide buffs and stuff just like the other tribes do. So I do like how even AoE tribes are being used now. Different tribes are used for different modes, I like that. Um, and as you saw there, that was a lot of damage and he just completely shredded two uh, tank units. So you'll have to check out that tribe if you have him. I don't even have KLM, so I really need to pull this guy now. He's just too good for PvE related content. Alright, so this one's pretty simple, it's basically just using your Jutsus. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate that his whole cell got wiped, but it's okay because we still do have our tribe up and that will be able to deal AoE damage and just probably three shot. And probably just one shot them, but the Jutsus were able to do it, so we're all good. And that didn't actually look as hard. So overall, pretty impressive strat. And of course, there are replacement options. You know, not everyone has KLM, so you might want to use another tribe gauge booster. Um, Blossom is usually the one that people go to, so it's not bad. And you might have to use a different tribe, but overall, these two teams did have very similar strategies, despite you know not sharing the same units at all or the same tribe. So feel free to experiment, keep these themes in mind. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and good luck beating Secret 3 and farming frags.